pick the, the, the protocol and you just connect there. And if you want to be a client to, to, to a HT3 gateway, a gatekeeper, you're just going to go here and you're going to pick as a protocol called HT3. Another thing uh, that was really difficult in it was to, um, for each protocol to get things right. When we started the project, we imagine what well, was a huge mistake. But we, we did imagine that we're going to write the engine and we're going to use the libraries developed by other people. These days, for example, for SIP, there is at least one decent library, which I think is GPLib, and I think it's developed even here in Germany. But at that time, there was no decent SIP libraries made for servers. So we ended up actually writing our SIP implementation. There was no decent IX library. The IX is a client library, so we ended up implementing our own library. Uh, and so on and so forth. The only one that we didn't implement is the HT3. However, we do have our own implementation for Jabber, for obvious reasons. We, we still didn't find any, any decent implementations for Jabber to be fl flexible enough. Now, that we had this client, we, and we have the Jabber support, we will develop this client into an instant messenger client. Okay, I kind of ended up talking about this uh, question. Any other questions? Do you have something like a, a very basic, I would call it a hello word example, um, where, uh, where you can uh, give us an example how easy or not easy it is to set up Yate. Um, and next question would be, where is the best place to get documentation, um, which is, I think, as hard as with asterisk? <laughs> I agree on that. I agree on that, and actually we just hired someone to write the documentation for Yate and the manual and everything. And actually there is a new website that we are trying to put up these days, which is docs.null.ro, and it's going to be up in, in a month or so. Uh, but right now, you're going to find out uh, how to guide in the documentation area of the of the Yate website. With Yate website, it's a Viki, but it's a Viki because it's, uh, most of the Yate website has been actually written by users. And we are really grateful because that was one of the major contributions, uh, contributions that the community had to Yate, except for other pieces of code that are pretty amazing. C can you can you put up uh, a sample configuration file on the on the on the uh, projector? Yes, Just sure. Why not? By default, by default, as you can see, you can register the service in Windows. So when you install the 8 client, you basically install also the 8, uh, the 8 server. But you don't have to register as a service to start it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Okay, one of the easiest way to do in Yate will be to, to get two phones to talk to each other, right? Will, will that qualify? That'd be great. Great. Now, well, as you can see, this file is called a uh, rec file, which is like registration file dot conf. Um, that's a module that, uh, yeah, sorry, in Yate different from asterisk, the registration and um, the routing is global. So basically, if you want to do the registration of a SIP user, you're going to do it in, in, in the same rec file as you do it for HTTP or IX or whatever. I, I don't really remember how it was in asterisk, but how it is in asterisk these days, but this is how it was at my time. Now, you, um, you just set up the, the username here, like 200. Is, is that very obvious? Uh, and you just put the password. And then if you want to have the second user, you're just going to add something like 201, and you're going to add the additional password. Okay? 
and then each user will, uh, will uh, register to eight with uh, 200 and 201, which is their account. And then the routing will magically happen. You don't have to put anything else anywhere because the registration file in this case is also a smart routing module. As long as you can, um, as long as you know where the users are registered, it doesn't make sense to actually add any more lines in any other f uh, in any other files. Another thing is that if you are desperate to use a database like I am, you'll probably like to use the re registration file. And in case you just want to do the routing, you, you, you can set up here the query. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how well can, can, can it be seen back there in the, in, in the room. Can, can you all see it? Okay. Now, as you can see, you have something like select zip slash zip to point something. Basically, Yate doesn't do any kind of routing. Yate relies on external sources to do the routing. There is no way uh, a telephony engine that uh, can do a, a billing or a routing application. This is why we have databases. This is why we have external applications. Another example is because I, I, I saw that question raised up. It's Enum, for example. There is a, a Enum module in it, but the Enum module in it doesn't do any routing. It relies on the on the external uh, Enum uh, module, uh, Enum server, to do so. Okay, so. We don't expect Yate to know many things about routing. We don't expect Yate to know anything about the CDR or about the billing or about the money or about anything like that. It's just a telephony engine and it's gonna stay like that as long as I work there. But the telephony side, it's at least done as good as possible. And we try, try to provide as many information as, as possible to the external sources. So that answers the, your question. Any other questions? Hey, Diana, can you give us an example of a, a, a customer or a, a commercial opportunity where you've used Yate to generate revenue and implement a solution for a customer? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the businesses always generate revenue for me. I don't know much about the customers. I, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> One of the most common applications these days is to do P uh, PC to phone applications, right? Uh, one of the things that we are developing uh, these days is like a complete system for uh, for a PC to phone company, which also needed uh, the web uh, the web uh, system, and they needed like prepaid and postpaid and resellers and invoices and so on and so forth. And we didn't rely on Yate to do that. We actually did all, uh, everything on the database, but we also built the provisioning system. Uh, and what Yate uh, does is, uh, of course, the voicemails and all the other PBX features. That answers the question, or should I go a bit more deep? Any names? Um, you will see on our website that we have a partnership with a company called Trisis, which is actually building black boxes uh, in, and is located in New York. And uh, they are doing uh, uh, passive recording systems for PRI or for RBS. Um, and it's pretty much like this. We, the, they, they hired us. To, to, to write the ISDN, uh, the ISDN system, and then we uh, prepare for them. They've been a completely Windows company, so they had no knowledge whatsoever of Linux, and I didn't want to go to the, uh, on the Windows uh, side, because at that point, Yate on Windows had a, f a few problems, and I didn't have time to fix them. So we've made this wonderful uh, Linux, uh, Linux CD with the Sangoma drivers, because obviously they've been using a Sangoma, a Sangoma card, and the passive ISDN system basically means that you are cutting the wire and you are catching the transmission from two different PBXs that are communicating between them. So if your system goes down, it doesn't affect the communication between, between the, the points. And that kind of system is actually used for call centers very often in US. Actually, US is one of our largest markets. Um, they told us that they sold the system. So I guess they are making money. But probably 